In the name of one God, creator, redeemer, life giver. Amen. What a beautiful gospel we have today. Loaves and fishes, miracles of God. The story starts out with Jesus being tired. I'm going to go ahead and say exhausted. And he sees this boat. And he gets on the boat and he's going to go to a deserted place. Well, while he's getting there, all the people, all the people that he's been preaching to and teaching and healing, they start walking, going through the villages and the towns and inviting their families and their friends to come with them and meet this Jesus and telling them all about this Jesus. So by the time he gets to the other side, The spot's no longer deserted. There are 5,000 men. And scholars will tell us that it's possible, if you add the women and children, probably 25,000 people. 25,000 people. So much for rest for the weary. Now, me, being me, I probably would have stayed in the boat turned the boat around, and went on back across the water. Thank God Jesus is Jesus. Because he looked at that crowd, and he saw that they were tired, and they were weary, and they needed him. He knew that they needed him, that they needed an infusion of God, and he had compassion on them. And so he got out of that boat, he sat right back down, and he started teaching again. Now the disciples are a bit more like me. And the disciples are looking around and they're seeing all these people. And they're thinking, there's a lot of people here. It's getting dark. It's getting late. They're going to get hungry. We have no food. What are we going to do? And they interrupt Jesus preaching and they say, Jesus, you got to, you got to stop. You got to shut it down for tonight. Send them home. They need to go home. They need to go to the villages and buy food and have dinner. And Jesus says, uh, no, no, I'm not sending anyone away. My table is big enough. My table is wide enough. My love is great enough for everyone. We are not sending anyone away. Bring me what you have. Bring me what you have. So they bring him five loaves of bread and two fish. This story is in all four Gospels. So some of the gospel stories you'll hear about the little boy who brought his basket of bread and fish. In our story today, it's the disciples who bring the bread and fish. So God takes this bread and he lifts up this bread and he breaks it and he raises it and he thanks God and he blesses it and then he gives it. He gives it to the disciples and he says, I want you to distribute this to all my people listening to me. You go, you make sure everyone has something to eat. And the disciples, they take that bread and they start giving it to the people and they are astounded. There is enough bread for everyone. Everyone eats until they are full and satisfied, and there is still more bread. There is plenty. There is more than enough. It's a miracle. I'm preaching to you, talking to you, from our I'm going to call it Mobile St. Gabriel Sanctuary because that gospel story reminds me of communion. It reminds me of the Eucharist. And Father Daniel just last week was saying, 
You know what? I'm really missing the Eucharist. It's, it's hard to not have communion together. And I understand that and I feel that. And I'm in this space that's normally full of food. These bins are normally full of food. It's only empty because we finished our deliveries for this week. This is St. Gabriel's Church on the move. This is communion on the go. This is God's love of abundance, of giving to everyone, of making sure the table is wide and ready to gather everyone together. Maybe the communion is now coming out of our trunk and through car windows. I, that's, I've got to tell you that story. Every week we count. We count. We create spreadsheets. I print spreadsheets. I, I highlight numbers. I write numbers on post-its. I put post-its on my wall. I put post-its on my table. I, it lines me up for all of our drivers and we sort and we count and we sort and we resort and we recount. Every week I'm wrong. Never fails. Every week my numbers are somehow off. It makes no sense. And every week I fret and I worry that I'm not going to have enough food for all of God's people. So one day we got a donation of three bags of Maseka. Well, we have 60 families to serve. Three bags is not enough for every family to have one. So we thought, okay, we'll fill the car with all of our food bags and then we'll put the Maseka in. And as we're driving, we'll pray to God and we'll ask God to tell us uh, which households to leave the Maseka. Because God always knows more than we know. So we stop at one home and my daughter goes in to make the delivery. And I'm sitting in the car and I, we have the windows rolled down because our car doesn't have any air conditioning. And so she can see, she's walking past and she's looking in and she sees all this food because it's piled high and she sees the Maseka and she comes and leans into the car window and she says, Maseka, Maseka gratis, free. And I get a little panicky and I think, oh my gosh, like I'm, we counted, we have our families. I have my list. Um, what am I going to do? She's hungry. She's like, I'm hungry. My children are hungry. Do you have any food for us? Yes, of course, of course. So we give her some bags of food and we give her the Maseka. And I tell my daughter, I said, I'm so sorry. Let's do as much of our delivery run as we can. Then we're going to have to go home, make some new bags and go out and make the rest of the deliveries. She says, that's all right. It's fine. So we keep going on our delivery run and we get to the end. And wouldn't you know it, we had enough we had enough for every single family, even though we gave away to a family that we didn't expect, that we didn't know about. God knew. God knew about her. God knew her need. And God prepared for her. We had enough. It was a miracle. And just this past week, it happened to one of our other drivers. We had one extra bag of food and we had a couple of extra grocery items. And I said, just take this. You'll know what to do with it. And sure enough, they were making a delivery to a family and out of the neighbor's home comes a mom with a toddler who says, I'm hungry. My toddler is hungry. We don't, we don't know where we're going to get food. Do you have any extra food? And our driver was able to say yes and give them food for this week. We didn't know them. God knew them. We didn't prepare for them. God prepared for them. God set the table. It's a miracle. And shortly before this, a couple of weeks, one of our drivers texted me and said, while they were out, 
someone had asked them for money and what should they do. So we decided it was time to make some blessing bags. Now a blessing bag in it we put water, granola bars, um, high protein snacks, fruit snacks, socks are really important. We try to get gift cards to McDonald's so that they have somewhere that they can go get a meal. Cards of encouragement, a prayer. So this way you can keep that bag in your car and if you come across someone who is asking for money or who seems like they might be homeless, you can give them that bag. And at least it gives them something. At least they know you saw me, you noticed me, and you can say God loves you. So we decided we were going to make those bags. Well, before we could make those bags, uh, my daughter and I were out on a delivery. We see a man who appears to be homeless. We stop to make our delivery. He comes up to the car and he says, do you have any water? And then he walks around to the other side to my daughter. Do you have any food? So we quickly put together a bag for him of oranges and apples and a loaf of the bread and a mask. And we ask him if we can pray with him. It was a miracle. The, the families who were receiving those bags that we took an item from, they provided. They provided for this man that they didn't know. God knew. God prepared for this man. It's a miracle. And as he was walking away, one of our other drivers drove up and we told her the story and we were all just praising God and thanking God and, and we were so happy that God had provided. And then next week, she came back to us, our driver, and in her car, she has for us 20 blessing bags that she and her Bible study group put together for us so that we could go back to all of our drivers and give them a blessing bag so now everyone has one in their car so that we are always prepared with God's abundance for anyone who God might bring into our life. We're disciples. We might fret, we might worry, we might get tired, we might get overwhelmed by the need in the world. It's, it's a really hard time right now for lots of folks. I met with folks last week. Someone has lost their job. Someone has lost their marriage. Someone's child is battling addiction. It's a hard time right now. And that can feel overwhelming. But the truth is, what loaves and fishes the miracle of loaves and fishes teaches us is God's got us. Before we even recognize the need that others have, that we have, God knows. God knows and God is ready to prepare the way for us. God is ready to fill us with enough, with more than enough. God is ready to give to us. God is ready for us to receive. God is ready to give to us so that we can give to others. You might give a smile. You might write a note of encouragement. You might make a phone call to a friend. You might bake bread or a cake. You might put together beautiful flowers just to tell somebody you love them. You have Whatever you need to share, God has given that to you. God has broken it and blessed it and given it to you so that you might give it to others. So you know I like to give homework. And I really hope this week that you sit with this scripture, you pray with this scripture, and you ask God, what? do I have to share? What are my loaves and fishes that I have to give? Show me the way. Give me the compassion that Jesus had 
and open my eyes and my heart to all those around me. Amen.